third season between the posts as Kilkenny's number one. Paul Murphy and Jackie Tyrrell are top-class corner men, while Joey Holden gets the number three jersey. Not alone has he to fill the boots of the retired JJ Delaney, but he's also now the team captain. Torrig Walsh gets the right half-back jersey and will be joined by the talented Kieran Joyce and Killian Buckley in what is a very strong defensive line. Michael Fenley and Connor Fogarty will play in the middle of the field. Both hurlers bring a wide spectrum of skills and talents to what is a crucial area. Walter Walsh regains his place in the starting 15 and joins two of the finest Kilkenny Cats in Richie Hogan and TJ Reid in what is a potentially awesome half-forward line. Ger Aylward replaces the injured Richie Power in the full forward line. But here is, uh, you mentioned earlier, some late dramatic news. Colin Finley is out, so John Power will start to the edge of the square. And this is the Wexford team. Mark Fanning from Glen Barntown remains the number one goalkeeper for the purple and gold. Liam Ryan and Owen Moore are selected at right corner and left corner back, respectively. Like Kilkenny, the team captain is the fullback, Matthew O'Hanlon. Lee Chin is a strong, forceful hurler, and he plays centre back with Andrew Shore and Kieran Kenny, who wins his place back on the team, operating on the wings. All at the Ballocks, David Redmond is selected at midfield beside St Anne's Dermot O'Keefe in a centre field combination that's bursting with potential. Shane Tompkins replaces Jack Guiney on the team with Dahi Waters leading the attack. The free taker on the team is this man, number 12, Ian Byrne. Paul Morris will play top of the right with potentially one of the best full forwards in the game, Connor McDonald at the edge of the square. And completing that inner attacking line is Liam Old McGovern. We're looking forward to this Leinster Championship. They're not gone, but he's decided to throw the ball in, and away we go. This Leinster Championship hurling semi final is underway. Ball comes down towards Connor McDonald, getting a little bit of space, making a little bit of an opportunity here, laying it out for his, the uh, left half forward. That's Ian Byrne, and the Byrne St. Aidan's man puts it between the posts. Yeah, lovely score, Marty. Um, Ian Bourne, good work by Conor McDonald. Didn't he looked like he had a run on Joey Holden? Didn't get possession first time. Maybe tidy. Did he pick it off the ground or not? But got away with a good, clever pass back and perfect start. And it's a nice wind as well. And I think that's good for them. Puck out uh, is a lengthy one, dropping it in around the house and gathering it here. Of course, is TJ Reid in a top of the left position, laying it back for his. Uh, a young fellow that we're going to hear a lot of more, about, more about, of course, it's John Power getting his big chance to shine. Yeah, Marty, good, perfect response straight away. John Power, who's who's operating at wing forward, actually. TJ's gone into the edge of the square, and we see TJ already winning the aerial battle on Liam Ryan, and that's going to be crucial. If, it, if, if TJ wins primary possession, you're in big trouble. Connor Fogarty spraying it over to the far over side. Their own Larkin just got a touch of the hurl to it. Lee Chick, forceful, dominant center half back normally, very comfortable in that position. With Kenny under a little bit of pressure, ball is put into space. Should be an easy ball for Andrew Shore. Wing back did well, it's not a great pass. Hospital pass, I think they would normally call. This is Ian Byrne. Scored a goal and seven points against Westmead. This is his first free support. Great atmosphere, good crowd, and people waiting to see what's going to happen, and the players are a bit like that at the minute. Here comes Jerry Elwood, getting away from his marker for the first time, and splitting the posts. It's a good score. Yeah, it's a great score, Marty. Out in front, um, I suppose that's why he's picked, you know. We chance here perhaps dropped it still he has a check great defending knocking it back out first Paul Morris waiting for it if needed to Shane Tompkins goes a little bit further out the field and it's stroked to the left and wide right. so it brings it back for the free he has his own unique style Ian Byrne but it works another white flag going to be raised it's his third point of the match Wonderful play here by Matthew O'Hanlon. And yet they didn't let him clear it, Matthew. They were so, it was, you know, you, sometimes against Kilkenny, of all teams, you can be nearly punished for a catch when you go off your feet because they're so quick to surround you afterwards. Jackie Terrell delivers it long down towards TJ Reid. Staying with him, however, is Dermot O'Keefe. 
Ball inside, just getting a touch to Aylward. Wexford defence under a little bit of pressure here. Owen Moore is the left corner back. Ball comes free. This is Michael Fennelly. Flicks it inside. There's a chance. And the green flag will be raised. It's that man, Richie Hogan. And therein we see the difference straight away, Marty, you know, uh, Mikey Fenley makes the break, this time the hand pass is delivered with a plum and Richie doesn't swing the hurley, he bats it to the net, you know, doesn't give them a chance to hook him, clinical finish, brilliant finish, gives Mark Fanning no chance. This is Paul Morris, and Wexford respond now quickly, dangerous ball, but it has too much weight in it. Look at the skill here of Richie Hogan. He wasn't going to be hooked. No, a great lesson for any young player. <laughs> you know, don't swing it if you're in like that. It's Walter Walsh to Richie Hogan to Owen Larkin. Put up the white flag. They're beginning to find their rhythm already. The All-Ireland champions looking sharp. What about this? Fantastic catch by Walter Walsh. Yeah, and some people questioning, you know, was how was Walter's form coming into it? Why was he picked and that? Because the end of that keeps it down that flank. So Penny out there in numbers. This is Michael Finnelly sending it dangerous, very dangerous up towards Richie Holden who flicks it forward. There's a chance here. Takes a shot. Oh, what a magnificent goal! Cheryl Edwards has already scored 1-1. 12 minutes, a rocket, unstoppable. Yeah, Marty, what's clear already though is they're at sixes and sevens at the back, you know, nobody picking up Richie Hogan, 10 yards of space. They need to recover from conceding two goals, but they need to uh, deliver the ball a little bit faster. Ends up with Richie Hogan. And Richie is a man on form again. It's a goal and a point for Richie Hogan, a goal and a point for Jerry Aylward. They mean business. Yeah, and I don't know, the, the replay doesn't go back far enough, Marty, but Dahi Waters had clean possession there, but stood to hit it and Mike Finley come in. Fogarty, flicking it. There's Michael Finley who delivers it in front of the forward, but this time John Power can't reach it, Lee Chin was lucky enough with that effort. There's Andrew Shaw. Andrew goes for distance and perhaps goes for the score. Fine play by the right half back. Fellas willing to step out with the ball. Walter Walsh knocks it down for Connor Fogarty. Ball comes out for his Kieran Kenny. Disposition. Oh, beautiful! Oh, Larkin! Saved magnificently by Mark Fanning. But he needs a bit of support. It's still there, and it's in the net. Owen oh, Larkin. But what will the referee and his team of umpires decide was it a square ball was there an infringement it's a free out I think Marty is the decision anyway but not sure for what far great save for Mark Fanning from the kick um, don't know is he, yeah, he might have been inside the square when it eventually trickled in but I, I, on further analysis I, yeah he, he possibly was inside very marginal and um, finished it to net but a really lucky break. they're at sixes and sevens Wexford in the full back line and Unless they do something to shore it up there shortly, this won't be a contest into the second half. So that goal by Owen Larkin, disallowed. He's needed. It's Conor McDonald. There's a chance for Liam Old McGovern, and it's over the bar. But it could have been much more. Yeah, and, and, and for once we see Kilkenny in a bit of disarray. Paul Murphy just decided to leave Liam Oak covering out there and inside and, and come out and contest a high ball. And Conor McDonald does what he does best if he's fed with the ball. He catches the ball in the air, uh, spots McGovern inside, he catches and manages for somehow to put it over the bar. And that's two goal chances and a one point return. And we see the difference at the other end. And that, that's, that's just confidence, that's just experience, that's just pure belief, Marty. You can't buy that. And Wexford need all those chances to go in. Paul Morris is the player that's getting a little bit of medical back. And you need to see more of that. Owen Moore with the free. The breaking ball is Kilkenny's. All given away, surprisingly, for as David 
Redmond and that is over the bar. 